Hi, my name is Kyle, and today I want to take a look at five things to help you make your studio lighting look great within Cinema 4D. Lighting in Cinema 4D is one of the most basic yet most overlooked things. Even professionals miss the simple details about scene lighting that can do more to enhance their scenes than $1,000 spent on rendering software. The default lights in Cinema 4D are okay, but there are some sweet spots we're going to have to turn on in order to make our renders really pop. Additional elements are also necessary to make reflections, shadows, and global illumination behave more naturally. All right, let's dive into C4D here. I'm going to go ahead and add a light. I'm going to move it so that it more thoroughly covers our subject here and do a test render. I'm going to be comparing this with our area light. So, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on area here and increase the size under the details tab of the attributes manager. I'm going to zoom out so we can see the light um, increasing in size here. You can see the little square in my perspective viewport getting bigger. And it's probably a good idea to rotate it so that it points at our subject. Next, I'm going to go ahead and turn on Z direction only. I'm going to check that box uh, so the light moves along the Z plus axis uh, from the light. And then I'm going to do another test render here. Okay, so if we go ahead and uh, this is our area light. If we go ahead and click on our Omni, we can see a, a harsher fall off here on the, the phone versus a more natural fall off. And this is the fall off is affected based on the size of the area light. Now let's go ahead and turn on area shadows and um, give it a render here. We can see uh, the shadow here pretty soft since we have a bigger area light. But uh, let's go ahead and change the size so I can show you how that affects the shadows here. So I'm going to change it to 200, half the size. So you're going to see the, the shadow now is a little bit sharper, and so is the fall off of the light. If I were to make it even smaller, it would be really sharp. And then here's an example at 1,000, like really big. So now we can see the light sort of engulfs the subject a little more and creates a very soft shadow wrapping around the phone. So a nice, soft, natural light there. But for this purpose, I'm going to turn it back to 400 and just bring it back to the way it was. So now we're going to talk about the light fall off. The light fall off is how much the light will decay after a certain distance. This is found under the Details tab here. I'm going to turn it on inverse square, which is physically accurate, simulating real world light. I'm going to have to move this up away from the floor here and rotate it again to get it to face our subject here so we get better coverage. Uh, you can see that the fall off has made the scene a little darker, so I'm going to brighten the light. And um, let's do a render and see how this has affected our scene. Okay. So you can see now we have sort of a, a vignette effect in the background. So here's before, solid lighting, no fall off. And here's after, we get more dramatic lighting, a vignette effect, which is really cool. Now I'm going to go ahead and add a plane to our light. So holding Alt, holding down the Alt key while dropping in a plane will bring the plane to our light's coordinates. And we can pull And uh, let's orient the plane to the Z plus axis. And uh, now let's go ahead and pull the plane back away from the light so it doesn't interfere with the light in any way. Making sure that the plane is the same size as the dimensions found in the area light under the details tab. So, so they're the same size. Um, we're going to make it material. Add some luminance. I'm going to make it a little bit brighter. 130 is probably about right. This is what we're going to add to our plane here. 
It's going to show up in the reflections of the phone. Now we have more interaction from our light, more than just the light itself. The phone is now reflecting the plane I just added, thanks to the luminance channel. So that's a little more added realism, as you can see before and after. So, pretty nice uh, little feature to add there for realism. Now let's go ahead and check on, um, take a look at global illumination. This is in our render settings here. Go down to our effects panel and just add in global illumination and we should be able to hit render and instantly you can see it calculating the secondary bounces here. So there's before and there's after. So we have more light on the right side and filling in the scene more naturally. All right. So now let's go ahead and add a sky. And we're going to add a, um, a material with an HDR image attached to the sky. So I'm going to zoom out so we can kind of see interactively how this affects our scene. So go ahead and um, pick an HDRI material, HDR.HDR format, containing 32 bits of color range, which is much more data than a typical JPEG can handle. This is going to be mapped to the sky and will show up in our reflections and will also be picked up by the global illumination to fill our scene more naturally. So now that I've applied it to the sky, you can see how it's basically surrounding, encompassing the whole scene. So I'm going to go ahead and do our test render. Okay, now you can see we have the light is filling in the scene. Um, this is adding like some ambient light and some reflections on the phone now. The scene is very soft, so here's before, kind of harsh. And uh, here's with the HDR sky added to the scene. You can see all the steps listed can be time consuming and also making small changes to the light size, color, brightness, you're going to have to juggle through multiple elements and each time you make a new scene you're going to have to do all these steps again and again which can be time consuming and repetitive. So I've created a tool called the Studio Kit Light which is a free download at my site. You'll be able to drop in a pre-rigged espresso based light which is easy to control through a streamlined easy to use user interface. It also has backdrops, HDR skies, studio presets to help you build a studio like we have here. It's free. Go to my site, c4depot.com, pick it up. It's my gift to you guys. I hope it helps. I hope you learned something from watching this video, and you guys have an awesome day. Bye.